me say something about it. Long Island. <laughs> what do you think about it? You think about money? You think about Pharaoh? You think about the number one wrestling show in Long Island? That's what Tommy Wildfire Rich thinks about. So, ladies and gentlemen, is a good friend of mine on Georgia Championship Wrestling said to me one time, he said, ladies and gentlemen, don't miss it. Be there. Yeah, baby. All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, filmed out of Indie Music TV. You're watching Long Island's number one show, Monty and the Pharaoh. Ooh. To the right is the star of the show, Mr. Jimmy Pharaoh. Jimmy, how are you, pal? Oh, I'm great. You uh, is it over? Did you have a great interview it, with the over? Metal Maniac? Is it over? It's over. Ooh, we're man. we're in a whole new interview now. Excellent. I'm grateful. That's it? That's all yeah, you're going to give? Yeah, well, you know. Before I'm, before we even got I'm on, grateful. you're like, I'm going to let loose. No, I'm giving you there, the opportunity. What's there to let loose about? I mean, we've been doing this for about four years now. We've had a, almost... Four years? No, well, around four years. four years, technically, if you want to go back to the earliest, earliest days. Anyway, go ahead. Okay, well, you're, poor, you're bad at math. What else is new? Oh, uh, you now know, you get to throw shots at me. Well, you know. Angry Pharaoh. Well, that's what we have right now. Uh, let's see. We've had uh, almost 100 basically Hall of Fame type guests. Uh, we've been given compliments. Hundred two, if you count the two guests we've we're been, about to we, interview. We've been given compliments from people like Stan Hansen and Larry Zbysko, and, and Sandman was like, "Wow, this is like being with Howard Stern. I absolutely love this." And uh, I'm I'm just uh, here to say that that was the most painful thing I've ever been through. I'd rather have salt poured into my open anus after having runs from eating White Castle. Well. Andrew, I just Andrew I'd say Anderson that. and Kevin Sullivan hijacked the show and took over. So you got. Well, thank God break. for that. All right. Brother Daddy. Wow. Daddy brother. Not a fan of Metal Maniac, I assume. Yeah, no, no, apparently not, because, you know, hey, what are you going to do? Anyway, I'd like to thank the band that sings the theme song for the Monty and the Farrow Show. That's Wisteria Hall. Wisteria Hall is led by our own Jimmy Farrow, along with his partner, Bart Griggs. Wisteria Hall sings such great songs as In My Dreams, This Life, Not Far Behind, Here Comes the Rain. And Riding High, our theme song. You can find their music on Spotify, iTunes, and Reverb Nation. If you didn't know it, this is the Monty and the Faro Show. You could catch us on YouTube, the Monty and the Faro page, Facebook Live, Monty and the Faro page, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Anchor, Twitch TV, the Monty and the Faro page, Channel 115, New York Cable, every Tuesday from 7 to 7.30. Yeah. And for early risers, Channel 115, 6 a.m. to 6.30, so you'll get a little bit of buff. And a little bit of the Patriot. Awesome. Early in the morning. Or there will not be a cable version of... Oh, uh, yes, there will. Well, if there is, it'll be the second half. Uh, anyway, yes, there will. Go on. Yeah. And Channel 20 <laughs> for... Put it, you guys want to something. So anyway. when Buff's done with this interview, he could go back to his m motel room and right. then sit back and watch Monty and the Pharaoh from 2 to 2.30 if he wants to stay up. Okay. With a styrofoam cup. With a styrofoam cup. Beer. There you go. Well, that's a plan. All right, we'll take a quick that's commercial a break, and we'll be back with these two wrestling icons. You know, real quick. Yeah. For this show, since it's Stars and Stripes, do we call him Marcus Alexander Bagwell, or do we still keep Buff Bagwell? He's irreversibly buff to me. I mean, uh, wh why don't we ask the... the Excellent question, though. We'll yeah, ask after the break. And, of course, <sighs> one of my all-time favorites, The Patriot. From the WWE days. Yes. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we'll be right back. Did pretty good in Japan, too. See you in a second. And APB, American Protection Bureau, voted number one best on Long Island for all your security needs. Call 631-390-9050. That's 631-390-9050. APB. Jimmy, I just got the best hookup on tickets. Hmm, fill me in. I went to www.seatslinks.com and ordered the best tickets with the best prices. 
Call 718-676-0504. SeatsLink, the complete ticket experience. Tell them Charles sent you. Elm Logistics, for all your logistic needs, call 631-299-3595. That's 631-299-3595. Elm Global Logistics, pride, performance, and partnerships. All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestler broadcast, Monty Nefaro, only seen here out of Indie Music TV in Long Island, New York. I want to thank these two wonderful gentlemen for coming in, the Patriot, and wait a minute, is it Buff Bagwell or Marcus Alexander Bagwell or Metal Maniac? What? No, <laughs> what are you trying for to starters, do? Insult him? For starters, nobody knows the third name. So okay. God no. bless him, love him to death. But nobody knows that name, so I, I, I think we need to stick with probably Buff. All right, we're going to stick buff. with Buff. He's yeah. the stuff. And just so everybody knows, you know, Farrow was a little upset over the last interview, <laughs> and Buff and Farrow were having a conversation <laughs> about it. What, what seems to be the issue? You tell me. Uh, well, Can I was explaining to Buff that we've had a lot of great guests on, and Buff was one of them in the past, and that... You know, the basic concept of an interview is just to have a conversation. A conversation involves two people, not one side of the ocean! And so then, that's my issue with our, pa our previous guest, if I may. And then Buff gave you some know. beautiful advice to you, right? Which I just simply said, have you ever seen him on television? No. And I haven't. I haven't. I mean, no. 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 So there's two. Not in no. South Carolina. I've two superstar it. legend wrestlers that have never seen him on television. I got a friend from Comac High School. And I hate to say that because he's yeah. a super, super nice guy. Really? But let's just call it like it is. Years. I mean, oh. y'all. Got to be a star. Y'all bring a guy on here that's not a star, he's not going to give you a star interview. Right. So do you so like, I, if you get a guy I, like, you know, you get a guy like that, or you just like, do you shuffle him off, like they come up and they try to you just go, get away from me? Please. I'm the patron. No, like, I'm like, no. like I mean, Del, do you hit the, the, the toilet button I on, on the console when that to. interview goes that way? Do you just hit the toilet button? I want button? to, but no, you don't. You just... Uh, let, me, let me ask you this. How did he get onto the set? <laughs> Yeah. Did you have to, no, you we, have well, to promise we, somebody to bring him on to get them on? No, yes. we, had, we, we, had him, we had him over <sighs> Skype, internet type of, okay. you know, that type of thing. Okay. He I was in Hawaii. I never right. heard of the guy until 10 minutes ago. <laughs> until yeah. 10 minutes I heard his name. Wow. I didn't know, wow. I didn't know and I went. Breath air until 10 yeah, minutes I, I heard his name hot, yeah. and I went. Who is that? What's the Pharaoh so hot about? Uh, yeah, interesting. But you'll get over it, Brother Daddy. It'll be fine, Daddy, Brother. You'll get over it, <laughs> yeah. you'll get over it Brother Daddy. He's getting brother on the Daddy. surfboard right now. He's coming. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Seven weeks later. Oh, dear All right, so Lord. we got two interesting things I want to discuss, right? Number sure. one, we'll, we'll start with Buff. Obviously, everybody knew you had a pretty horrific car accident. Yes, yes. Do you want to tell the fans out there what happened and how's it coming along? It's kind of a long story, but long story short is just a bad car wreck and um, and it, it affected my right knee tremendously um, to, you know, I was on a walker, you know, three or four weeks ago and now I'm down to back in the gym and, you know, gained my 30 pounds back I lost and got back in the gym and so I'm, I'm a month away from, I mean, people, <laughs> I tell them to think I'm crazy, but I'm a month or two away from being in the gym, I mean, in the ring. I mean, I mean, this is that simple. I mean, there's nothing that's ever kept me down before. I broke my neck in 98 mm. and had to go out and do an interview showing my scar because the insurance company wasn't going to pay WCW for my, all the stuff because they didn't believe there's no way this, this person could come back this fast and look like that if he really broke his neck. Right. There's no, there's no way. So literally, we had to make up an interview, and me and Scotty went out and just made one up with me and Gene, and I had to show my scar and everything to prove everything, you know. And they went, the, they went in through your throat for that, too, Yeah, right? they went to the front wow. right here, yeah. So wow. I fused it three, four, six, seven. I got two titanium plates and eight screws. <laughs> that ain't counting the knee, the hip replacement, five surgeries. <laughs> I go in for one hip replacement and get five surgeries. <laughs> but you look good, though. That's what, that's what well, really what's my fucking name? Yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm Bob. <laughs> that's right. I, I, and you got the me. stuff. <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ. I, I look, I, I'll open the mid. You know, I'm man crushing on you right now. You're all right. I love it. No, <laughs> I love right. that. Yeah. It's not, uh, you know, oh not, you know, there's nothing wrong with having a simple man crush on no, somebody, right? Not at all. And maybe even 
just as difficult as your accident, um, Dell, if you want to chime in, uh, President Trump was voted out of office. Do you have any thoughts on that? <laughs> You'll never convince me he was voted out of office. Okay. You'll never convince me 80 million people voted for that bumbling idiot. He can't carry on a conversation. He's yet to have a press conference. Uh, everything's been done by evil. Well, just to make it clear, bumbling idiot you're talking about? Joe Biden. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Wait, I'll, be, I'll be very clear about Okay, it. yeah. Right. The, the dopey uncle in the basement? Yeah. That oh, guy. okay. I just guy. wanted to make no, sure. You he, know, the, the, one's, the one that's got dementia. He is the current <laughs> occupant of the White House, oh, but yes. you'll never convince me that he won an election. And uh, I don't need videotape from a from a voting precinct in Atlanta, Georgia, where mm. they're pulling suitcases out from under tables. To understand that. All I need to know <laughs> is that voting laws were broken leading up to this election. Mm. We also know that in states all across America, according to the U.S. Constitution, the only way you change voting laws is through state legislature, not through judges, not through Supreme Courts of those states, and all those things were done, and that's enough right there to tell me that it was a bogus, rigged gimmick. Will all of this result in another party no, I don't, I don't think he can stand another party. That's right. my opinion. Right, I agree. No, I, I don't think another party has a chance. Um, It'll hurt I, the Republican cause, in my opinion. Absolutely it will, and, and I don't care what Mitch McConnell says. I'm just giving you <sighs> Del Wilkes' opinion. You you asked me, so I'm going to open up. Fair you. enough. He is the Republican Party, he being Donald Trump. It's not Mitch McConnell. It, it's not Nikki Haley that was the governor from my home state of South Carolina. You know, she... She blasted him two weeks ago, and then after the CPAC speech, she couldn't kiss his rear end fast enough. She's not the future of the Republican Party. Right now, he is, and whoever he deems to be the one that should run for president in 2024. So that party's been red-pilled. 75 million people, including myself, were red-pilled. I, I don't even refer to myself as a Republican anymore. I'm a conservative. So, Understood. Yeah. Understood. Excellent answer. So... Um, I think we could agree with yeah. most of your comments, yeah, for I'm sure. Um, being that, that being said, do, do, are you going to support Joe Biden and his efforts in fixing what's wrong with the country at this point? No. You know, I'm a, I was a big Rush Limbaugh fan. I still am. And, and, and I listened to Rush for 32 years. And I remember when Obama was elected in 08 and uh, inaugurated in 2009, and Rush made the statement on his radio show, I hope he fails, because I want the same thing to happen to Joe Biden, because Joe Biden is for open borders. Joe Biden has eliminated tens of thousands of jobs by cutting the Keystone Pipeline, by halting border construction on the wall, uh, therefore uh, just the, the mass murder of, of the innocent in the womb. So there's nothing that he does that he stands for that I hope succeeds because that's every against every principle I have. So I they hope believe it. I hope that in 2022 uh, we can take the house, get the house back, and uh, we'll see what happens in the Senate. But no, I, I wish him no success because he has a very radical leftist, progressive, socialist agenda. How did you feel? Speaking of that. This is something that has irked me for years. How did you feel when Obama allowed the animal from Iran to come to the United to the United Nations and speak with dignified leaders of the world about how the Holocaust never happened? Well, how frightening is that that we actually allowed somebody like this this maniac to come here? and speak the words of hatred and obliteration to another country, and we're all just going to sit there and be like, oh, that's okay. He's allowed his opinion. At what point do we draw the line between right and wrong? <coughs> well, I'll put it to you this way. It was appalling, but a Democrat has never met a socialist, dictator, murderous thug they didn't like. Interesting. And that's, that's the way I feel about Interesting. it. Interesting. So, both of your opinions, where did Donald Trump, or pre former President Trump, go wrong? I will give you my opinion since I've been yeah. too much Twitter. No, I okay. have no problem with that. The, the, oh, the I wonder sometimes the if mainstream he has been a little, media's not a little more like Reagan, it. maybe a little less restrained. Well, Twitter's here's what helped. I tell, tell people all the time. All right, and I think I mentioned it today to you. Yes. Put aside personality. Set sure. that aside. I think he needed Twitter, and I think he used it properly. I have no issue with it. Fair enough. Name me a policy where he went wrong. If you can name me a policy where he went wrong, mm -hmm. he created the greatest economy this country's ever seen, the highest employment ever for blacks, 
black women, black men, black teenagers, Hispanics, Asian women, uh, the strongest economy we've ever seen. He made our presence felt around the world. He brought our, was bringing our troops home. Uh, he killed Soleimani. He killed al-Baghdadi. Uh, Joe Biden eliminated Dr. Seuss. Wow, that's a big deal. Um, <laughs> yeah, so well, that, that's another subject. I, I don't want to go to because I'm going to ask uh, that question from uh, you next. So but, to answer uh, your question, I don't think he did anything wrong. I think a pandemic fell in their lap that was politicized, and they manipulated mailing voting through that. They beat him over the head in the media, the mainstream media, where he got about 2% approval before mm -hmm. they said anything good about him. Right. They took advantage and politicized his mail-in voting, and they politicized his pandemic. And if he would have gotten 100 million votes, Joe, Joe Biden was going to get 105. He never stood a chance after right. 2016. So no. let's bring it back a little bit. What could he have done different? I, I agree with 98% of the things that you're saying. The issue I felt was he needed to just reel it in a little bit because he, he his comments, a, why? A lot of the women of this country were not ha a lot of again weren't happy with what he was saying right who gives a fuck well they, they there's always they take up 50 percent of this country right well i mean well so what probably more. He, did, he lost a lot more than that <laughs> well yeah but we lost an opportunity of maybe having one of the greatest presidents of all time he is the greatest president besides reagan one of the greatest presidents i think of all time there's no doubt about it i mean I personally love when he put Every the, time you hear about a president, I told Dale this today, I said, every time you hear about somebody, or whatever, president or whatever, it's always, they came from a middle class family and they fought their way up. And they, we need somebody running this country that does know what a billion dollars is. Mm -hmm. That does know what a trillion dollars really is. And, and not the one that's, you know, grew up on a farm and broke and it's always that story and... He he knows how to run big things, so I think we lost a great president. But we lost we lost four years, another four you know four years, and maybe if he could have yeah just, four years of everything maybe, he, did, he did everything perfect. Do you think he everything, did, he, said, everything he, he said he did? Do you think he didn't listen to his cabinet enough? I've though? got no idea. No, I, don't, I, I don't think that's it. I, uh, one of the reasons I no longer will identify myself as a Republican, that <laughs> most of them are as bad as those on the left. It's a uniparty. Gotcha. They are. They're globalists, each and every one of them. And he had as many within his own party fighting him as he did on the left, just about. He really had, in the, at the end, at the end of the day, when this thing was coming to an end, he had very few allies. And I mean very few. That party, with the R beside it, hated him just as much as the ones with the D beside it. And that's how I feel. So I just think his goose was cooked. He caught him off guard in 2016. And in 2020, 75 to 76 million people voted for him. That's never happened. We've never had uh, an incumbent, anybody running, get that many votes. But it was, this thing was rigged, dude. He wasn't going to win if he'd have got 110 million votes. I, I agree. I just Especially if somebody with dementia. Just <laughs> throw that in. Listen, the guy that didn't even get out and campaign. I mean, you, you dissolve that ad up. People, people are eliminating people now from social media to say none of this adds up. This is fraudulent. Well, it doesn't add up. They're telling us now that we don't see what we see with our eyes. <coughs> no, you don't see that. Well, the heck I don't. Well, this isn't the first time this country's had a rigged election, right? No. It's happened numerous times, right? I mean, again, I don't have proof, but enough, yeah. enough reading. I understand this happened. I think, I think Kennedy Nixon. Absolutely. Probably a good example of it. Absolutely. That. Interesting. Just a different group got Kennedy yeah. in. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. right. Yeah. Right. So, so Giancano and yeah. people like that. Mm. So you brought up uh, Muppets and uh, <laughs> Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss. So how do you feel being part of a country right now uh, that supports a song um, called like Wet Ass Pussy as uh, number one, and that's okay, but we're going to sit there and try to shut down Dr. Seuss books and... Uh, put rated R status on the Muppets. It's insanity. What's happening to us? It's insanity. What's going on? I covered this uh, on, on my podcast a couple of weeks ago. I'd never heard of this guy. His last name is uh, Wallen, a country music singer. Mm -hmm. And he was in Nashville one night where he lives. He'd been out with some of his buddies. And he gets back home and they're out in the front yard and they're yelling and screaming and cutting up. And uh, they're rave, revving their engines on their big pickup trucks. And he's a big deal in country music. I'd never heard of him. And uh, I can't remember his first name now. His last name was Wallen or Waylon. And um, he calls a taxi for one of his buddies that he did not want driving home. 
And when the taxi gets here, he's telling the taxi, to t and I don't use that kind of language, but take care of my blankety-blank man, make sure he gets home safe. And he said it several times, take care of my blankety-blank man and make sure he gets home safe. And then the third time he said it, he referred to him as my boy, but he used a racial mm -hmm. gotcha. terminology. Yeah, right. It's used every day in music. It's used every day in society. Mm -hmm. But because he's white, he almost got crucified for it. And all the platforms that play music on the internet won't play his music. His record label suspended him. They didn't release him because his record sales went through the roof or his music sales went through the roof because people responded in a way that said, this isn't right. This guy's being punished and being beat down with a heavy stick because he used Told the, the word. Truth. He used the word. And they say it's, it's an endearing term. That's my buddy. That's my blank that's my man yeah. you know they sure. refer yeah. to him in that and y'all know the word i'm talking about that's my boy and uh but yet this guy was getting crucified for it but if you're black you can say that and it's a term of endearment you can sell millions of records using that word but right. a white guy uses it so it's all across society that that's going on now well did you did you face that while you guys now look you guys are famous professional wrestlers um did you see a lot of that in your profession, that type of banter back and forth, or was it taken to a level where people got upset? You could use the whole Hulk Hogan thing, or you can use the Booker T thing. Uh, what did you guys see there? Or is the company I, I, just? I personally didn't. I mean, we. Um, I mean, we heard. I heard because I, I was a lot younger and was very lucky to get the spot I got, and was lucky enough to have you know teammates like Dale Wilkes and. They put me in good spots, so they took care of me and um, and put me in the right places. But we heard things like, you know, so and so suing them, so and so suing them, you know, and and I heard things like that. But you know, but years later, I've heard that they got you know millions of dollars, a couple billion dollars over it, you know. Wow. And so just things like that. I mean, you know, well, I, I heard, but you probably know. You know, I come from a different era. I'm a little older than him. I played college football at the University of South Carolina from 1980 to 84, and it was a different deal back then. And being in a football locker room can be a tough environment if you don't have thick skin. And we would really, really ride each other and say things to each other that, man, if you said something like that to somebody out in the street, you're going to get in a fight. So I heard that kind of banner back and forth in the 80s in a college football locker room and on a college football field. Uh, it was sort of commonplace, and nobody got offended by it. Everybody, we were teammates. We were brothers. There were no cell phones. <laughs> but it was, it, was, it, was, it was also a different time, right? It was a very different time. Let, let me ask you this. Aren't you, you, uh, you, you, you know, uh, unveiling the mask is the name of your podcast? Unmasking the truth. Un unmasking the truth. Aren't you allowing someone at your level, who is a very famous pro wrestler, you're allowing, with all due respect, the common folk to communicate and banter with you over your beliefs, aren't you allowing them to feed into this? Allowing them to feed into yeah, it? Yeah, because you're allowing them into your world. I understand your political views, and you're allowing the common folk to be at, not, you know, to be at your level. And when you allow someone that, then this stuff, it's, it's, it's manifesting, right? You know, the language, everything that's going on. Do you take a certain amount of blame for that because you're allowing this to happen? I mean, I know I see people on there. I, I have watched your show, and I've seen people say, oh, that's it. I'm done, you know, on the left. I'm done with Dale Wilkes. I'm not, I can't talk to the guy. The snowflakes out there, right? I can't have a decent conversation. Aren't you part, like, I guess, aren't you feeding into that environment? Then? I don't think so. I think freedom of speech is a broad thing, and I think freedom of speech has to, you have to understand that, at least that's what I was told all my life up until sure. a couple of years ago, that freedom of speech could be very offensive. And people, not only freedom of speech, but freedom of expression. If somebody wants to dip a crucifix in a in a, a jug of urine like, what was it, Maplethorpe did, the artist back in the 90s or 80s did, uh, I shouldn't be offended. That's his freedom of expression. If somebody wants to burn a flag, that's freedom of expression, right? And I need to be accepting of that. This is just something that, that has recently happened, and it's perpetrated by big tech. It's perpetrated by the media so, so and the wait, web. So you're accepting of not playing the national anthem you're accepting of kneeling during the national no, anthem no I, I didn't say that I, right. I did i did not say that I, i'm accepting of people expressing themselves when you're at work when i'm on my podcast i'm not representing the company i work for okay when you're in the nfl you're representing that shield mm -hmm. you're representing that franchise that pays your money and pays you a stinking lot of money 
and I don't mean to hijack your thing, and I'm sorry, but let me no, ask y'all. No, no, you both. Both go out. I'm loving it. Hank here. Hank here. <laughs> just yeah, right away, not to interrupt, but Mike Messier over there. out there says he's sending Harlem Heat over here to take care of you. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead. Yeah, We've already beat them funny. twice. Go ahead, Del. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There yeah, you go, Messi. Right. <laughs> One of the greatest baseball players ever just died, Hank here. Sure. A, a man that truly grew up in a time when being a black athlete in America, and especially in the South, was a tough thing. Sure. Tough, he tough. heard some tough, tough things. Sure. There were times when he couldn't eat with his teammates or couldn't stay in the same hotel mm -hmm. and had to stay at the end of the street or had to go on a back door to a restaurant. And not only did Hank go through that, Different but door those, and stuff. That's yeah. right. And those that played in that era. But do you know those men, while they still endured that, they still had a love for this country. They still showed a respect for this country. Right. And they endured some real stuff. These jack legs today have endured nothing but getting their bus kit, butt kits kissed since they've been in the eighth grade. They've been athletes. They've been good singers, good dancers. No matter what color you are, no matter where you come from. And they've had their butt kissed their entire life if they had something that was perceived as special. Mm. They endured nothing like those men went through. No. But they can't stand for a flag. Those right. men never acted that way. They handled themselves with grace, and they didn't mind criticizing their country when they thought their country was wrong. Those men didn't. They marched in civil rights uh, as they should have. They did things they should have done to overcome all that. But, man, they don't have the bitterness that these people have today. And these folks today have lived in a country that, for the most part, is colorblind. You know, Buff, I'm, I'm going to... My man crush is moving over to Dell now. Uh, is a man so here. Del, so is mine. Your hat looks like shit. <laughs> wow. Ooh, now I'm losing oh, oh, my shit. Yeah. Oh, I mean, oh, I mean, oh, I'm, oh, that's I'm, it. I have just, it's the worst interview I've ever had. It's the best looking shirt I've ever seen. I'm out of here. Right. The best, best, best yeah. looking shirt I've ever seen in my life. That does look like shit. <laughs> <laughs> Buff, what are your thoughts? Oh, dude, I'm not, I'm not in the political thing. I mean, what he just, I, I was so intrigued with what, what he just said and so interested that I just, I don't do things that I can't do nothing for. When you're getting a million v views every single Sunday, you can voice something. But who gives a shit what Mark Bagel says about politics? I care. Well, I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't even care. <laughs> I just know that, that Donald Trump should be our president. That's, that's all I know. Okay. That's, that's, that's it. The rest of it is, you know, I told my dad this the other night, he didn't believe me, but I've watched it with my own eyes, and it was, I remember watching when I was like in my teens, watching a Black Miss America mm. contest. And I remember thinking to myself, didn't tell nobody, didn't talk to nobody about it. I remember going, wow, I wonder if it was a white Miss America contest, what would happen, you know? So that's about as far as it goes. I got... Tons of black friends. Well, I mean, I, that's a good point. I, Does that upset you? I was you raised as a, by a nanny. As a, as a white male. I was raised by a, a, a lady named Flo Mama. As, but does that upset you as a white male that you feel it may be reverse discrimination? I said, I don't want to go there. I just, I just, I'm not knowledgeable enough as, as, as Dale. Dale's, Dale's very knowledgeable and, and very smart about this. And All right, so, what he just said, I was so intrigued with. Let, like let you me ask were. you this then. When you and Dale were tag teaming and you'd go to the hotel and there were some hot girls there and Dale hooks up with some hot girl, did you steal his mask and then after he left the room come in there and just act like you were the patron? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not sure oh, what that meant. God. <laughs> <laughs> no. Aye, aye, aye. Besides the mustache, oh, you didn't have the mustache back then. All right. So you could probably... All right, with that, we're going to take a quick commercial break and then we're back with these incredible heroes of ours, Stars and Stripes, The Patriot, and Buff Bagwell. See you in a sec. The Monty and the Pharaoh Show is brought to you by... Because wine is your second favorite four-letter word. California wine, New York attitude, good fucking wine. Yeah. Jeff Quest, graphics design, custom vinyl lettering, and all your art and video needs. 516-317-8204. That's for Jeff Quest Graphic Design. You need a body shop? You need engine repair? Auto Excellence. Collision Specialist. 631-261-6420. That's 631 
6420 Auto Excellence. All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty Nefaro, only seen here out of Indie Music TV, usually on Thursday from 9 to 10 p.m., but this is a special Saturday edition yeah. Yeah. with pro wrestling superstars, future Hall of Famers, The Patriot, and Buff Bagwell. Guys, uh, this one's going to be aimed at Dell, and then Buff can admire the answer. Um, this is not an easy question. I hope I say this right. Can you tell me... In your opinion, and this is sensitive, what the difference is to you between a swastika and the Confederate flag? Well, I grew up in the South, and I think, first of all, I think people... There's a lot about the Civil War that's been misunderstood. I, I understand the slavery issue, but there were other overriding issues that led up to For sure. There were states that tried to secede from the Union that, that weren't slave states prior to this happening. So that is not the only reason for the Civil War. But when you control the narrative, then you can control history, and then you can paint it any way you want to, and that, that's been done. Slavery was a horrible blight on this country, a horrible thing. And... But there were more issues that went into fighting the Civil War. Um, but now back to the swastika and the flag. I never, ever, ever, as a guy that has flown that flag off my house years ago, I never looked at it as it pertained to the Civil War. You know what it represented to me? It represented the region of the country that I lived in. History. I've traveled this world, and there's no place like the South. There's no place like Dixie. And in my opinion, there's no place like South Carolina in that region. So to me, it represented a way of life, a more slowed down pace, a more friendly pace, where neighbors helped each other and looked out for each other. Uh, I never looked at it. Well, boy, that was the flag that kept people enslaved. That wasn't the way I saw it. Right. Have there been some groups that have used it in a negative way? Yes. Sure. But also, too, the American flag flew over states as well that... That, that were slaves. Um, slaves were brought in in this state, in the port of this state. Uh, but you know, again, when you control history, you control the narrative. And, uh, or, you know, when you control the narrative, you can control history and, and the reading and the printing of history. But um, that's just the way I've looked at it. I've never looked at this Confederate flag as any. And again, I'll go back to this living in South Carolina. I've been there all my life. Up until Dylan Roof went into a church and shot nine innocent black people. And, and I went to high school with Dylan's dad. Mm. I know Dylan's mom. Mm. He come from a bad family. And when I say bad, it was a very dysfunctional family. But this kid was a downright racist. And he went into that Sunday school room, and those people allowed him in, invited him in. He sat with them. They prayed with him, prayed for him. And that scumbag stood up and shot nine of them. Dylan Roof doesn't represent what the South is about. Mm. South Carolina reacted great to that. There was no burning. There was no looting. The people of South Carolina came together on one of the worst things that ever happened in that state, ever. We're a good state. That Confederate flag flew over our state house until that happened. Nikki Haley brought it down. But all those years I lived in that state up until then, there was never one black person that I played football with, went to high school with, that ever even mentioned that flag. It, wasn't, it meant nothing to them. Mm. It didn't affect their life in a negative way. It was just part of life. It was part of the time and history, I think. You know, well, I mean, is, is well, that, why are we not taking other things down that are bad that are history? I mean, I mean, I mean, it's history. I mean, mm. so I mean, are, are we're not going to teach our kids history. I got taught history when I went to school. When I went, <laughs> which no. wasn't much, <laughs> but but still, you know, you learn history. That's part of the deal. Sure, you're supposed to know what happened and what went on, and 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 I mean, but there's that's gone now because of what's going on. So I don't. That's the part I at. You know, I'm 51 years old, which is, you know, a man, an old, an older man. But I'm just not very in the political thing. I just, I'm just not near as knowledgeable as Dell is, and 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 he's, you know, very, 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 very smart about it. And um, I, um, I'm intrigued on hearing him talk about it. But I just always, when I think about it, at my in my world is just it's it's, it's history. Why are we? erasing history period no matter if it happened or not right. hitler killed how many people or whatever we that's not erased right. so why why is 
well, the a left, flag getting erased. Well, the, the left would say that the Germans didn't put a statue of Hitler up in their country. Why are we doing this of, uh, you know, our well, I'd call, I'd, call, I'd call all them fucking idiots. And by the way, why is it that. every single time a liberal wants to compare someone they don't like, they compare them to Hitler? Right. Hitler is in rarefied air on the demonic level. Right. But how does Donald Trump get in the same sentence That's what I'm saying. as a mass global murderer? Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm at a loss. That, that's I've, the individual that's not educated enough to have an argument with you or a debate with you or mm -hmm. a discussion with you when they've got to go there. They'll go there or they'll call you a racist. That lets you know right there they've got no clue what they're talking about. Right. Have you ever been, been able to turn anybody in your conversations? <laughs> Good luck. When you, when you debate over politics, have you ever turned anybody? So basically, people just stay in their lane, argue, they believe what they want to believe, doesn't matter what the truth is, right? Well, I, I don't know. I, I think I've been able to persuade people to see things certain way, maybe just certain individual things, but to, to radically change? No, nah, I haven't. All right, well, look over there. One of the fans watch shows says, let's talk some wrestling. So here's what I'm going to ask you. Jim Crockett passed away. <laughs> Thoughts on Jim Crockett? Man. My, my only thoughts of Jim Crockett was is right when I got hired he was in charge and then um, so I only met him one time I was almost 20 or just turned 20 and I got hired to a $500 a week go to school contract by Dusty Rhodes and three days into that Barry Windham blew his knee out and they put me on the road and i knew right there that was my time to you know to to, sh to show up shout you know to, to show who i what i could do and what i could be and and we did so and they you know it was hard it was tough i mean i'm sitting in a locker room with guys that are 10 to 12 years older than me for some reason the whole clique was always 10 to 12 years older than me Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, Sting, Luger, probably you. It, the whole clique. Yeah, and so the problem is, is you can't be a pretty boy prima donna that plucks your eyebrows and shaves your arms and your back and your neck in the world of pro wrestling unless you're a badass or may, may knock somebody out. Mm. So for for at least a year it was it's going to sting took me in first and they were like why are you right you know the pretty boys always get the fag thing why are you hanging out with that fag and da, 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 da. I mean from the nasty boys down I got just ripped apart then one day I knocked a guy out of the bar cold the nasty boys counted ten count and I've done it so many times I'm walking out of the bar. In Jacksonville, Florida, as cops are passing me <laughs> to go to see what happened, because I know as soon as I hit him, they're gonna be coming. Right. It ain't my first time I hit somebody. So after that, it was like, you know what? <laughs> Back with this may fucking knock you out. So you know, y'all. So every, when I became that kind of person, they didn't know the little boy in the corner over there had been to jail and more trouble than the entire locker room. But I couldn't say that, so I just suck it up, take it. I got dumped ice water on me every shower I took, and we talked about it on Stone Cold's podcast by Stone Cold every single time. And when I came out of that bathroom, there were 30 sets of eyes on me just waiting for me to go, who the hell are you? And I came out whistling, drying off, and just didn't sell it till finally... You know, I won him over, and and then then all of a sudden I was, you know, Marcus Bagel was funny and cool and great, and then all of a sudden though, then it switched to, did you hear what Buff said? So Marcus Bagel didn't change nothing he said. Buff didn't change anything, right. but when Buff became Buff, it was like, ooh, Buff said so and so. Did you hear that? Oh my God, you know. So that was, you know. That's just you know, life, you know. Would it have made a difference though if you would have came out of the shower and like tried to beat? Oh, absolutely! It made a difference. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have survived. It would have 
uh, you get ate alive by the guys, by the boss, you know, in everything. I survived five bosses at WCW, mm. and then and there's only two guys, only two, that went the entire eleven year career with WCW, and that was Sting and me. That was the only two. Yep. Everybody went back. I mean, I had guys that would beat me at WCW, get hired by the WWF, come back to WCW, and when I saw they came back, I knew. I said, well, I'm getting beat by him again, and I get beat again, again by that guy. Right. Which shows nothing but the WWF is stronger than WCW. Right. And I'd go to Eric and go, I finally went to Eric, and he had me, we hired Sandman. And I love Sam. He's a great guy. Just had that. him in a week ago. Yeah, yeah, great guy. I love him. But we hired him, and they had me doing a, a job for him in Vegas in front of 60,000 people. And I said, Eric, why do you always want to make companies or all the bosses? I said, this is automatically going to show that, like, ECW is better than we are, obviously. They walk in, and he be, beats Buff Bagel out of the gate. So what was well, it was over. I'd be, I'd be Bam Bam Bigelow and Sandman together, because it made sense. Oh, so you turned it around. Yes. Okay. But back to Crockett. I don't have no opinions on Crockett at all, because I never only met him once, and then God, I think it was maybe Flair or Oli. I mean, no, it was Dusty, I think, because Dusty's who hired me. It was Dusty first that was our boss, and um, I remember wrestling a match with Chris Benoit. And, uh, I mean, I've wrestled 70-plus dead guys now. And if I have, his number's close to the same or higher, you know. Well, how hard is that on you guys? I mean, that's like your, that's like your family. It's, like just, you, it's you know? just, it's just, it's just, it's so. How do you so, deal with that? It's so bizarre. It's so bizarre and amazing. Let there, let there, let there be 70 NFL guys die. Mm. And let's see what happens. Right. Let there be 70, you know, Major League Baseball guys die. I mean, come on. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about. Dusty Rhodes that hired me that died. I'm not talking about right. Um, Owen Hart. I'm talking about yeah. guys I locked up with and wrestled. Rick mm -hmm. Rude, Ed, right. Eddie Guerrero, Chris Benoit, Bam Bam Bigelow, Kurt Henning. I mean, big name guys that I locked up with and worked that are dead. So and is, gone. It, is it the steroids? Is no, it the hell use? Is no. Is it the it's drug not. use no. or the mixture of taking the steroids with the drugs? Steroids ain't got nothing to do with nothing, dude. It's nothing. Steroids I mean, had nothing to do. Nothing with to do with any what of it. What is it that it's causes so many tragedies? Medication, yeah. cocaine. It's Medication. somas. It's sleeping pills. Yep. It's Valiums. It's Xanax mixed yep. with alcohol. Yeah. Uh, trying to come down from snorting eight ball of cocaine. I was going to yep. say the exactly coke back in the day could not have. Yeah. Well, 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 keep in mind, your name's Buff Bagwell. For, let's go that route first. And let's say that I can look at a bag of cocaine and lose 10 pounds. <laughs> so <laughs> that was not my drug of choice, right. by no means. Right. And so, you know, I, I, I just didn't do that. I mean, I, I would and did and all that, but it just, I couldn't play with that one, you know, so I didn't. But, um, you know, just, uh, but the steroids thing, Duke, is beat up and all that, dude. But I'm telling you, how many commercials now do you see about low T? But during wrestling, yeah. oh, God, testosterone. That's why Chris Benoit killed his family. Right. Bullshit. Got nothing to do with it at all, dude. The steroids ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Roid rage ain't even a thing, bro. It ain't even a thing. Really? I'm telling you it ain't. My doctor prescribes me testosterone, and every two weeks I give yes. myself an injection. So do so I. I. Comes I in my door. The steroid part. It was and you a, don't tear your T-shirt off and wait, run no, around but, the house? I don't beat my asses. Okay. Could the low test be from the use of steroids, and now your body stop? Obviously, when you get older, your test goes down. Sure, it does. Absolutely. Right? But using the steroids but, uh, when let's you were also, younger. But let's also go the route of my 19-year-old nephew. His testosterone was low. Okay. So right. I, can't, I can't answer that because of things like that I know. Look, Maybe what you're saying is true. 
I, but I don't know. I'm not saying I'm anti-human. No, 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 no. I'm not dogging you, you for You're either talking one. about running backs like Peterson who blew out his knee and he was back in seven months using whatever they gave him. Mm. That's some kind of miracle drug. Well, I was back you know. in 10 ripped and shredded. So there you go. You call it, you know, so, and it wasn't from but my only my point, low T. My only point, do you think it's. You, you just think it's the drug use. It's not Absolutely. Just, it's just yes. the, Absolutely. One it's just thousand the lifestyle percent. and the yeah. drug use. It's the same thing. It's lifestyle a, and the and I mean it's prescription drugs. Period. It's a deadly period. cocktail of prescription drugs mixed in with some alcohol, mixed in with cocaine, but mostly the prescription drugs. Yes. When you take enough somas, you're going to go to sleep, and you're uh, one day you'll not wake up. You take enough Xanax mixed with Halcyon, drink some liquor. You don't want to knock yourself out and go to sleep. Uh, you, you will, and we, eventually you won't wake up. You can ask. You can ask Dell. You, we used to go around with your hand over the top of your bottle because guys would, would, would they call it call it H bomb. Wow. They throw a fucking. But the only thing that saves you is if you did it, you knew what you were looking for. The beer would foam over. Right. So you literally would walk around with your, and the joke became. Guys started going around with with their bottle. But to be honest with you, that, that, that's not really too funny, right? You could end up no. taking someone out. Like, why would you even do something? That's, like that? But that's the kind of shit. Everybody thought it was funny. Yeah, yeah we thought it was hilarious. Wow. <laughs> yes. I mean, I, I never did it because I don't want to waste my now, pills. Now, both of you went from the NWA to the WWF. Was there a difference in the lifestyles from the guys or just the same guys doing the same thing? I never noticed a difference. I worked in Japan on the other side of the world and the lifestyle was same. It didn't matter what company you worked for. No company had a stranglehold on that lifestyle. Yeah. It was the boys that decided to do that themselves. Yeah. And I worked with plenty of guys that never partook in that and never did that. So it could be done. I just didn't choose to do it that way. <laughs> well, okay. no. That's fine. And I didn't either. How do you feel about a lot of people want Vince McMahon to, to pay up for uh, a lot of these things. Does Vince owe these wrestlers anything? No, that was approached, as many were, about joining that lawsuit against Vince <laughs> the McMahon. The concussion thing. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I, Vince McMahon, again, when I got to Vince McMahon, I can only speak for Dell Wilkes, but mm -hmm, when I got right. to Vince McMahon in 1997, my body was ravaged with injuries. Mm -hmm. I, was, I wasn't long for the wrestling world. I signed a three-year deal with him. And I was already having pill problems before I got there. And Vince didn't create that. Vince got nothing to do with that. Eric no. Bischoff had nothing to do with it. No. Giant Baba had nothing to do with it. No. Jim Crockett had nothing to do with it. No. It's we as performers and wrestlers yeah. that decided to get those Percocet or get those Somas, Valiums, whatever. Go get them filled and go to the doctor and yeah. juggle pharmacies and all that. We've all done it, every wrestler out there. We recently had uh, Lee, Lee Cole, brother of uh, Tom Cole, uh, were you guys around during the Ring Boys scandal? Did you see anything from that time Who's period? The Ring Boys with Pat Patterson and Mel oh, Phillips oh, Jr. Oh, see, see, I don't. I was. That was before. Yeah, was that's there. way before. And I, and I was never there. I was always. Okay. I was yeah, WCW. You didn't, you didn't come across my whole career. Because I know it was like early match. '90s, so I'm trying to see whether or not you. Yeah, did. that was right before. I, that was before I worked for Vince, or he worked for okay. Vince. Okay, yeah, so we were into business, but that was. Before so let me ask you, both you guys, your best year in wrestling. How much did you make? Uh, I made seven hundred fifty thousand. Was the best year I made. He made more than I did because I got out before he did, and it exploded. Mm -hmm. Even though, even during that, WWE it was that run. Yeah, I, I was, was in the run. run. Yeah, he made more money. I was in that run where we heard somebody got a raise. You were there, and it, they we called it raising the roof. The next motherfucker was. So you were happy the when they were bringing a new talent, like a high level new talent? Oh, absolutely. Like, oh, All that told us was, was, well, we're getting a raise. Is there some? And if Eric Bischoff would have came to us, the only thing I just, the only thing I think that would have saved it at all, or had a chance of saving it, and it makes sense to me, is if Eric Bischoff or anybody, not just Eric, any boss, um, would have came to us and said, "Look, you guys are making ridiculous money. If everybody just comes down to making a couple hundred grand a year, and let's quit paying Kiss." Seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars to right. play one song that <laughs> I've never heard. Right, sure. I've never heard the song they played in Vegas that Wait night. Wait a minute, God of Thunder. <laughs> That's a great song. But anyway, go. No, on. I, I'm telling you, I, I had <laughs> never heard not. it. I'm not saying it's not a good song. Right, I'm telling you, I'm a Kiss you. fan. I got you. And I watched them play, and I'd never heard the song before. Right. In my life. But do you think the boys would have did it? I, I really do. Really? I really Nash, do. Hall, those guys. Maybe not. 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 Maybe not.
like, get out of here. Everybody always brings up union, the union thing. You know, why don't you guys have union? Right. Well, because there's not 30 football teams. There's this. We had two, WWF and I WCW. There's you. not, when you're making three or two or three million or a million or whatever you're making, Dude, you're just taking your check, and you don't want to. You don't want to rock the Dude, boat. Dude, seven hundred fifty grand. Obviously, what you were doing was great. Seven hundred fifty grand. You probably half the time you're getting stuff for free. And the only reason I wasn't at. making a million is because of the ten months of the broke dad. Yeah, I missed that that wave of that raised the roof. But real quick, Dell, you're running the WWE. The pay wasn't that good. No, you, I you mean were, I was I was close to half a million dollars. But, yeah, you were hot. But I was got I got out before the WCW blew up with the NWO yeah. when they were making that kind yes. of money. Yeah. Right, because you had tons of potential when you were going with Hart. Look, we've got uh <laughs> we've got about two minutes. How does it feel after all this time, you know, Guy like Eric Sims, super agent, brings you out and these fans just adore you. I show it tomorrow at the big event you're going to have, I don't know, I'll just call 3,000 fans looking for your autograph and picture. How does it feel that people are in such awe of you still at this point? To, to me, I was telling Dell about this earlier. <clears throat> to me, for example, I've heard that <clears throat> and, was called, and was contacted that, that they were going to put the NWO in the Hall of Fame. And I declined. I mean, that's that's like, I mean, it's, it, I mean, I, I mean, if you if you're on the football team and you're and you win a Super Bowl ring, yeah, you're a Super Ring. But if the guy goes, well, who'd you play for and who are you? Mm. I, I don't, I don't yeah, really. You know what? You, I don't really you, see you, that. you got a high level name, man. People know who Buff Bad. Right, that's what okay. I'm saying. But I, but still, I don't want to be part of. My a, wife, a who group. hates wrestling, says, "Oh, you have a Buff Bag one? Is he okay?" She even knew you had a car accident. She doesn't follow wrestling whatsoever. Right, right. So she knows oh, it's who all dudes, you are. man. It's it's a dudes thing. It's it's our crowd. I saw our crowd go during the NWO thing. It went from it went from all chicks to all dudes with NWO shirts on front rows. So it was. I mean, I'd go to a bar and take fifty selfies with guys and. They wouldn't even let. I said, "Can we let a few girls <laughs> just get kind of close so yeah, I can yeah, talk?" Yeah. But they didn't even know who I was. But every dude, I asked a guy, if he's over thirty. I'll tell him who I am. They'll go, "Oh my god, I knew I recognized." But anything under thirty, it's iffy, you know. Mm. But I'm appreciative. I'm appreciative that they remember me. That's uh, yeah. They don't have you know. I've, I've been out of the business absolutely for a long time, and I'm I'm very appreciative. That they remember thankful. me, and I, I, I'm thankful. Absolutely, yeah. man. It's a, it's a wonderful fan base. You know, I think it's the best I, there is. And I don't, and I really don't want to be known as part of, no, the biggest thing ever to hit wrestling. I don't. I really don't. I would love to be part of one of the biggest things that hit wrestling, but I wish someone would come in and take over the, the what NWO did. I think it'd be cool and great and fun. But it hasn't happened. Mm. And that's why I'm here. There because go. there isn't... There, there's fat guys that wear t-shirts <laughs> and oh boy. pull up as many videos as you want to pull up 50 years ago, 25 years ago, 100 years ago, and you will not find one wrestler that's wrestling with a shirt on. Not one. Now turn it on, and every swinging dick has got a damn shirt on, and you know it. Oh, they're 110 pounds. Or they're 110 pounds. Yeah, great. Tell you feel the same way? I don't watch it. I don't watch it. I, don't <laughs> I watch, try. I don't watch the current <laughs> product. If I want to see good wrestling, I go to YouTube, and I watch stuff from the 70s, <clears> 80s, 90s, when, I, when he and I were they wearing the shirts? Uh, and I go back to the Japan <laughs> stuff. No, re good wrestling to me is not on TV. It's on YouTube and things like that. Interesting. Wow. All right, with that, I want to appreciate you guys coming in. No, um, thank you, You man. guys are icons in this business, Hall of Famers, and uh, as wrestling fans, uh, you know, we can only thank you for allowing us to watch you guys perform. Oh, man. Appreciate, we appreciate that. Again, thankful, you know. And I, I want to correct myself on one thing before we go. What, sure. that our show is better than yours? Would you oh, there's, there's no doubt who shows better. Oh, man! Oh, 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 you said, oh, well, you, you you said that. He lobbed it over the yeah, plate. I mean, with I a mean, snow shovel. Yes. Yeah, the snow it's, shovel. It's gone.
It's going. No, about the but table. the thing it's I want to correct going. is you asked me earlier if I had persuaded someone to change. Yeah. I, in fact, have, and it's the most important person in the world to me anyway. My daughter, like most people when they're younger, are liberal. Now she's a staunch Trump supporter. She's 26 years old. She's got her MAGA hat on. That's what I'm so, yes, about. that's the most important one. She's old enough to know better. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Well, all, all I could say is uh, God bless this country, and hopefully uh, Absolutely. It, it it improves for sure. Uh, last thing before you send us out, Farrow, uh, Julius Aarons goes, what's up with the gloves? A lot of people ask about your gloves today. What's going uh, on with that? It's wicked. Someone asked you you were going to rob someone. I said, it's, you're going to rob the Patriot after the interview. Yeah. What? Oh, you picked the wrong guy to rob us. No, I'm not. Yeah. Gonna, no. <laughs> Fuck no. Yeah. Don't rob us. His, he could keep his mask. Uh, it's been winter. We've had 7,000 feet of snow. Okay. You know, so there you go. That's why I'm wearing it lately. I'm cold. Is that okay with you? Uh, Ju what was it? Sound like somebody it's from Julie, Mary Julian Artis. Yep. Yeah, sounds like somebody from Mary Poppins. Oh, there you go. So yeah. now we just lost a fan. Well, that's one less subscriber. Congratulations. Thank you, yeah, Bye, Julie. Good job. <laughs> See you later. All right, this has been Mike Monty. This is the Pharaoh. Until next time. Later.